You know, my wife said this was going to happen. Old Tony, she said, if you keep worrying about this, you're going to make yourself sick. Wouldn't you know it, I've gotten sick. Self-fulfilling prophecy, I tell you. That or germs, maybe. Milwaukee, if you're listening, or anybody from Wisconsin at this point, I've got a bone to pick with you. I just saw your announcement for the new tools coming this spring. Spring 2023, to be clear, just in case someone's watching this in the past. Yeah, I'm a little late to the game. We all know I'm maybe not the most concentric call it in the rack, but I only just saw the announcement. I'd heard rumors that a cordless pruner was coming. Battery-powered pruning shears. Now, to say I was excited would be an understatement. I spent weeks with a smile on my face and a spring in my step, and I waited. A couple of days ago, I was on YouTube, as it happens, and I saw it for the first time. Some of the brand ambassadors or what have you got their hands on them and did some preview videos. Little YouTube shorts. I think I got sick as soon as that. Have you seen what Milwaukee is dropping on us? What is that, Milwaukee? And more importantly, who hurt you? You shouldn't be making these kind of decisions when you're... I should have probably mentioned this earlier, but this isn't a sponsored video. So we're clear. I want everyone to know that although all of my cordless tools are Milwaukee, I don't necessarily consider myself a Milwaukee fanboy. At the time I was getting into the whole cordless tools thing, it just happened that the design of their drill or whatever the heck it was, was the one I happened to be the most carnally attracted to. Design-wise, maybe. Maybe it was the color. Fast forward 10 years and I'm invested in their printer cartridges. So I buy their tools. It's just the side of the tracks I happened to grow up on. Though, just between me and you, if you cut me, I bleed red. In the off chance it isn't apparent, I've got a little something to get off my chest. Ugh, sorry about that. I've got what some have called an unhealthy infatuation with pruning shears. I take issue with that, but for the purposes of this video, I'll just roll with it. To me, it seems like a natural extension of my old dude with tools syndrome. But if you do a lot of pruning, you'll know there's just something about that right fit for a tool that's meant to be an extension of one's body. Pick up the wrong shears and you've got one heck of a bad day ahead of you. Of course, what you're looking at here is a few years of collecting, I won't lie. This isn't even counting the ones that either broke or I gifted to my neighbors. But let's talk about these and Scout's Honor We'll get back to the Milwaukee thing ASAP. To understand why that Milwaukee is a little bit of a letdown, I think it'd be good to understand what's good and bad about these things, the manual versions. If you don't do very much pruning or it's very light stuff, any pair of sharp, clean pruners will do. But let's go through this real quick like, even though there's nothing I'd want more than to talk through each and every one of these with you in excruciating detail. If you're still young, have strong hands, and still got that sparkle of life in your eyes, the cream of the crop, in my opinion, are these double cut shears. A sharp pair of double cut shears are a joy to use. They have two opposing blades and work more like diagonal cutters, dikes, and wire cutters. Hold on. They work like these, as opposed to everything else we'll see, which are bypass shears. You know that wiggling motion you have to do sometimes with regular shears? Trying to bite off more than you can chew and have to work back and forth 15 times and hope you cleave your way through? Well, with these, two, maybe three flicks to the wrist and you're through. And unlike every other one here, double cut shears have a flush side. So you can really lay that down to cut where you want. 
blades are quite thin. That's got to be less than a quarter inch, so easy access into bushy trees or branch clusters. They do have two big downsides though, maybe three, and are the reason why I went from using these almost exclusively to them not seeing the light of day anymore. First, they've gotten really expensive, and for no good reason as far as I can tell. I don't think I've ever paid more than $15 or $20 for a pair, but that was probably six, seven years ago. Today they're closer to $50 probably. Second, and probably more important, they're an absolute pain in the butt to sharpen. Because you have two thin blades coming together, they're not super strong. I don't care how good the steel is, if you're doing hard work with these, sooner or later they're going to start to wear back. And they'll typically start to wear out at the bottom, in the throat. If you've ever had the sharpened diagonal cutters, you'll know why. You just can't take the cutting edge back. You have to sort of take it back and rotate it at the same time, around the hinge. So when the blades close, they meet nice and tight stem to stern. Third, or whatever number we were up to, when you're making bigger cuts or in harder woods, they're quite jarring when they snap close. Now that's fine for a few cuts, but do that for an entire morning and you'll be boiling your hands in lemon water to make the pain stop, or whatever it is kids are doing these days. The rest of these are all bypass pruners. They were originally used for bypass surgery, and that's where they got their name. Like regular scissors, one blade passes past and over the other blade. There's really only one blade here to sharpen. Oh, come on, would it kill you to do some basic maintenance on? There is another style of pruner called an anvil pruner. I think it's mostly for clearing dead wood, but I don't own a pair to show you. Though I'm holding these Fiskars, Fisker Pro, but I don't even know why they're in my lineup. The name is completely misleading, and as much as I hate to say it, they're absolute garbage. The blades stick for some reason. You probably can't feel that over video. The blade is on there pretty awkward. I don't know if you can see that little pin there. That's the only thing driving all of the cutting force through this blade. You see that sort of wiggle there? I've never quite liked that, but they feel good, I guess. And they're all black, so they're easy to lose. Though Fiskars did something right with these. These Fiskars and the Bacos are a real pleasure to use. I prefer the Bacos because they're all metal. But the Fiskars, where I'm surprised they didn't also make the blades out of plastic, are still fighting the good fight. Both have nice, thin, strong blades and a flush hinge. Gives you great access. Though, mind you, these are both smaller cut capacity. Half inch, maybe. I'm sure they've done a little bit more. The Fiskars are a little more ergonomic with this more aggressive sort of angle of attack. This has got more of a straight body design. Though the Bacos have little rubber bumpers down there cleverly hidden in the spring. So the snap through I mentioned on the double cut shears isn't as bad here. They're like little shock absorbers. The Fiskars don't have that, but they're plastic, so there's a little give in the handles, I suppose. A little jarring, but definitely usable. Main takeaway here, comfort. Which brings us to these bad boys. This is a Swiss-made Felco pruner, and this is a Japanese-made Toshiba, Tobish, Tobisha? I'll put the name up on the screen. Now these I haven't had that long, and they were a gift. A gift I bought myself, sure, but a gift nonetheless. These are super nice. Poster child for super nice. Sharp enough to shave with, a pleasure to look at and to hold. These are the ones I match with my white suit and take to Sunday church. But I gotta be honest, after brunch, when I get home, I put these away. I frankly don't use them that much. They have a lot going for them, except the price. The blades are very thin, both in thickness and sort of profile. The hinge is a little on the big side, but it's clean, cleanish. Construction is absolutely impeccable. However, like the double cut shears, when making bigger cuts or tougher cuts, these snap shut something nasty. If I'm in the mood to use them, I have been using them for more delicate stuff. Very young trees, stuff around the garden. But if I'm being honest with myself and honest with you, I use these because they make me feel pretty. Which takes us to the Felcos. I'm sure these need no introduction, but very sharp. They stay very sharp, extremely comfortable. These also have the shock bumpers. And if that weren't enough, they've got a built-in wire cutter down there at the bottom, which well, I've never used it. Anyway, these are my number eights. I just prefer the number eights. Number twos, I think, are the most popular based on how often I see them around anyway. 
but the 2s and the 8s both have the 1-inch capacity. The 2s, however, have a weird aluminum support for the blades. They come down, I think, almost to the tip. It's a different way to mount the cutting blades, maybe makes them easier to change out. I don't know, but for me that makes the whole thing a little bit thicker. Makes them clunkier, I think. The 8s just feel better to me. They're sexier. These have been my workhorse, the ones I reach for 9 times out of 10. Until... I know I'm late to the game, but is that wild or what? Is this a complete game changer? And not in the my odds of cutting my thumb off in the blink of an eye just went through the roof kind of a way. The rush of power I felt just now is indescribable. If you've used these before, you know what I'm saying, but they're almost magical. And this isn't like when we first got cordless drills for the first time, where sure, it seemed convenient, but you didn't have a lot of confidence in the power. You were used to your cord. Actually, that's maybe a good example. Cordless drills, they evolved from corded drills, but we kind of knew what to expect. With these, it's like pruning shears went from the stone age to the space age overnight. Before these, you'd need an ax to lose a finger this fast. How inconvenient. Let's see if we can't put this another way. This is my NIST standard. It's walnut. Dormant winter walnut, not that supple, lively springtime stuff. According to the inspection report that came with it, half inch diameter, three quarter inch diameter, one inch diameter. And here are my sharpest shears. What you'd expect, three quarter inch. That is tough to get through. I'd probably get a saw out at this point. Let's try the Falcos. Not a problem. Ugh. I wouldn't want to do that more than a couple of times. Now let's see what these... One inch. Pretty wild, huh? And it's not even like I have to squeeze the trigger any harder. <clears throat> yeah, it's not gonna happen. How about that, huh? No nasty snap through or aching hands. Just a simple pull of a probably too light trigger. I won't have the chance to really put these through their paces for another couple of months yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Part of me is afraid I'm going to ruin all of my trees. You're not going to get tired of pruning and stop at good enough because your wrist hurts. Oh no. You're going to prune that tree until there's nothing left but a stump in the ground and you'll be smiling the whole time. I paid, I think, $140 for these. Right now they're $130. And when I started this video a week ago, Amazon was running a limited time deal thing for $99. Are they a piece of junk that'll fall apart after one season? I don't know. They probably will. Given the cutting forces these things generate and what I paid for them, sooner or later I expect them to self-destruct. Though, maybe the batteries will give up the ghost first. But credit where credit is due, this is still on the original charge of the first battery. Oh, and I almost forgot. Want to see something that impressed me? This is just a strip of paper. I have a feeling I'm going to end up with egg on my face here. But one of the first things I tried after I cut all the bushes down out of my yard was the paper test. And I was expecting these things to fail it. I would have expected power shears to just bend the paper through the jaws. Instead, these leave a pretty darn clean cut. You don't want power shears to just crush and tear and sever your branch. You want that nice clean cut. All right, cleanish cut. These, by the way, are Kebtech brand. I've never heard of that before I bought these. This is by no means a recommendation or an endorsement of any kind. In fact, I only bought this brand because of this smaller form factor, the one inch capacity, and I like the fact that it's orange instead of the yellow or baby blues you see out there. That said though, and keep in mind I no longer work for Vandalay Industries, I very strongly suspect that all of these import cordless pruners are all from the same one or two factories in China. Just looking at your options, if you're looking to buy something like this, it becomes pretty obvious. They're simply different colors, different label, 
different price, you know the story. There are also larger ones. You can get them with bigger batteries, slightly bigger form factor because they need more power for the bigger cut for not that much money, actually. And the larger ones will do upwards of an inch and a half. You're getting into loppers territory there. So now we get to the rub. You can see these cordless pruners are an evolution of the hand pruners we've been used to. They're not quite there yet. The power end is a little bulky. The blades are very thick. Clunky is the word, I guess. You just can't get in close to the cut you might want to without contorting yourself to get into position. This is a weapon of mass destruction, and these are surgical tools. If not careful, I really foresee these leaving lots of branch stubs that will either, best case, throw off a lot of shoots next season, or worst case, not let the tree heal over. Just for reference, while we're here, professional powered shears that would satisfy all of the above requirements do exist, but the starting price is easy over a grand, and they all seem to have back or fanny mounted batteries. So there's still a cable, which I don't love. Though the latest generation of these seem to have some kind of saw stop technology built into them, which in theory keeps you from cutting your own fingers off. Is my finger worth a thousand dollars? I asked my wife and she said no. Okay, so you're up to speed. I'm just a regular guy with a regular healthy attitude towards pruning shears. When out of the blue, the brand of cordless tools I happen to have bought into announces new cordless pruners. And Milwaukee gives us this. I'll admit it, at first, I was a little let down. But then, I got my hands on a pre-release model. Check this. Is that something or what? Nice beefy tool, around one inch cut capacity. Not only does it have a nice thick neck, but it's got the shoulders of a freaking bodybuilder. I know it's hard for you to make out with this camera angle, but I'm sitting in my garage pruning the trees at the end of my driveway. Let's get serious. All of the innocent and fun loving, but actually cuts deep joking aside. You know what really bugs me here? This is a tool obviously designed to do a thing. Maybe it's not perfect, and sure, maybe they cut some corners, not the best plastic, complete disregard for how many screws we can see, but this is, I don't know what, someone's idea to plug a hole in a product line? Hey, let's use all the same parts from the tools we already make and just put some scissors on the end? And it looks slow. Judging by their promo videos, to me, it looks slow. Slower than this thing anyway, and this is slow. That might not seem like a big deal at first, but that time really adds up. If you own an electric chainsaw, I'm sure you know the feeling. Imagine your barber using scissors that moved at that speed. If you're lucky, it'd take you three hours to get a haircut. For anyone wondering, yes, I did briefly consider the Ryobi. Ryobi makes a sort of normal cordless pruner, but it's even slower still. Or, then again, maybe I'm being too hard on Milwaukee. Maybe this isn't meant to be the kind of pruner I expected it to be. Just for ground cleanup, perhaps? Maybe it's meant to break down branches you've already pruned? Storm cleanup, maybe? Maybe it's just for pruning branches that are growing out of your bench vise. What do I know? At any rate, I think I'm going to sit this one out. But I do have to give Milwaukee a little bit of credit. After all I've said in this video, I'm glad they didn't go the way DeWalt did. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's me again. It's Valentine's Day. I'm in the park having a romantic picnic with my wife, so I have to make this quick. I spent the last couple of hours talking with her about this Milwaukee thing, and she too is speechless. I mean, her exact words were, I can't believe what I'm hearing right now. I need to be alone. <sighs> Trust me, I totally get that. A well-adjusted buddy of mine brought up an interesting point that hadn't dawned on me. I've been putting some heat on the size and shape of Milwaukee's one and a quarter inch cordless pruner by comparing it with this one inch pruner. One and a quarter versus one. Maybe that wasn't fair of me to do. Maybe bigger cut capacity means bigger tool. So I bought this. This is one and a quarter inch cut capacity. This won't fit down on this end. And this sort of does. This is oak. And yes, I am just as shocked as you are right now. The model with the larger cut capacity is the same exact size. In fact, and feel free to believe this or not, this new one is even a little slimmer. They played some tricks with bumping around the screws around the perimeter. 
slim down the handle a bit, probably almost an eighth of an inch. It's not much, but boy, can you feel it. I can't stress this enough. No affiliation with these people. I have no idea yet if these are complete poop, but I bought this one from the same brand because it looked like it took the same exact battery. And sure enough, to keep the lawyers off my tail, I should mention officially, this is 25 millimeters, what I'm calling an inch. This is 30 millimeters, which I'm calling one and a quarter, but one and a quarter is actually 32 millimeters. So technically Milwaukee's got it beat. Perhaps the additional 80 thousandths of an inch warrants a bigger tool. Anyway, I gotta run. I can't wait to show this to the wife. I just know she's gonna go bananas. Thanks for watching.